obviously there are people across the state in imminent danger. Our skies are filled with haze right now from these fires. And on top of that, we are losing so many trees. We've just nearly lost the oldest uh, state park in California. Talk to us about how expansive the damage is and how difficult it is to recreate, you know, hundreds of years of forests. Yeah, and this, I mean, this is personal. And uh, so I guess what I can say is just give a nod to the folks that are being impacted. Uh, investors and I have colleagues and friends that have been impacted and suffered immense loss. And people are feeling that pain, that, that pain's seen and heard. And I guess one of the, the ways it can be quantified is, and it's painful for me, people saying, oh, it's a bad fire season. This is likely to be one of the coolest years of the next 100. So it is, it is not, we're not headed for a bright future. So I guess what we're trying to do about it is we reforest with drone swarms after fire. They are big drones. They're uh, about eight feet in diameter. They're heavy lift. They carry a 57 pound payload of seed vessels and we operate them in swarms of groups of up to five. We're the first and only that are uh, FAA approved to operate in that uh, manner. And the way we do this is we're paid per acre as a service. We focus on post wildfire because all of the weeds or things that would uh, shade out and kill your trees are gone. And we're helping people that are affected access capital through carbon credits. Um, last time we were on this program, we announced a contract with the Nature Conservancy. We're working with timber companies and government as well. Um, what, what I'm really pleased to announce today is that we're, we're um, that the co-founder of Tesla, Mark Tarpening, has joined our board as an observer. And some of the reason for the traction that we're seeing beyond just there is a crisis is that there's some big things happening in the carbon credit market with carbon credit futures. I'm excited to talk more about that. So before we go there, how soon after a forest burns do your drones go, go in or can your drones go in to plant the seeds of a new one? We operate a little bit like insurance, and for those customers that are already on contract, we can be on site within 60 days. And that shortcuts a big uh, problem in the sense of normally you have a wildfire, you send your seeds off to a nursery, the nursery then, you, depending upon how long you tell them to grow for, it's a year, two years, then you contract the labor, and then people with, that are use like manual labor with shovels, superheroes, they'll go out and they'll plant these trees. And that's if you have the funding. If you don't have the funding, you've got to go out to a grant agency and others, and that adds another year. So you've got potentially two, three years before you're able to reforest. So, for example, some sites with Paradise Fire are just now getting reforested this year. So what we're able to do is be out there within 60 days for customers already on contracts with us. And then we, we have drones, so they fly, so they navigate that terrain much faster. Um, we're about six times faster in many sites today. Now, I know you're still working on expanding in California, but living here in a, in a fire danger zone, especially over the last three years, each year has gotten worse. Each year, the fire season seems to have started earlier. And, and it sounds like you're saying that it's only going to get worse for the next 100 years. I mean, how many, how, how, how much of our forests are you expecting to burn down this century? Well, and this, and this is what has to change is currently we're seeing, we've, we've normally relied on natural regeneration or just seeds in the soil or are left up in the crowns of trees after low severity fires uh, to do the bulk of the regeneration. And then when in cases, some cases we've been able, we've gone out with uh, one to two year old trees going for nurseries. Well, What's happening is with catastrophic moderate to high severity fires, we're seeing increasingly that that wildfire damage is, it's, it's not coming back as forest. It's, it's persistent early seral phase or 10 foot tall bush. And so what we need to be able to do is build the capacity to be able to reforest faster because when your rate of burn is exceeding your ability to uh, plant or for nature to regenerate, there is a future in which if you don't correct and start going to afforestation or planting more than you lose, uh, you're actually going to see a future where potentially California just doesn't have any forests. Now, we can fix that, but we've got to build the tools. Now, let's talk about the carbon credits that you mentioned earlier and how this is becoming more attainable for customers who want to access it. 
Yeah. Um, what what was previously the problem? Like, what are the big problems beyond just the long supply chain and manual labor? Is the the access to capital, and that's changed in the last uh, eighteen months to two years. Previously, you had to wait twenty five years to get carbon credits from a new reforestation project. You had to wait for the trees to grow, then you could get your money out of the project. Well, that project just couldn't compete with twenty five years of compounded interest from another project, and so nobody did it. And so what's changed now is we have ex ante credits or carbon credit futures and very reputable organizations, uh, Climate Action Reserve, Vera, Gold Standard creates these. And then within one to two years, verifies that the trees have established that they are that they're surviving. And then they issue uh, a conservative baseline. Now, over the next couple of years, you exceed that baseline in carbon sequestration credits. You get those credits back. So that opens a huge market. Um, it's a $215 billion global carbon credit market, and it's, it's been growing 3x over the last three years. The U.S. is barely in it. It's mostly the EU. And if you look at, well, what if the U.S. did enter it? 23% of S&P 100 companies have committed to go carbon negative and neutral, or neutral, but they're still sort of like getting their baselines on carbon credits. If Microsoft alone, which has already pledged to go carbon negative, enters, it's going to take up 16% of the voluntary credit supply. That's our math. And so looking at that, there's just not enough credits. Their scarcity, those values are going to go up, and that's going to drive a market action. And that's where we can connect reforestation okay. to capital in a really significant way that's not been possible before.